human beings can or will at some point take place uh, or participate within the divine council, um, whatever vocabulary you want to put to that. Um, but this small group of people believe that, you know, it's not necessarily when we die, it's not at the age to come, although it could be for some, most people, um, but you can actually participate now. Um, is there any academic uh, info on that that you yeah, could? I don't, I don't see any justification for that, you know, beyond, I mean, when you see the, the real-time human participation in that sort of thing, in the Old Testament, it's always the divine encounter, the call narrative, you know, the, which is the real proof of a prophet. Like, like Jeremiah says, have you stood in the council of God or not? Um, so, I mean, there, there is that thing in biblical literature, but to, to say it today, you have to bring along that baggage. You have to bring along the office of a prophet with divine encounter, which, since we're now transitioned to the New Testament period, you have to bring along the apostolic status as well. And again, I, I don't see any, any legitimate argument for Scripture for continuing <laughs> those kinds of things, because what, what those were was those were, the, those were the voice of God for the entire community, the entire believing community. That's different than God, you know, giving some Christian today some specific word or some, you know, in a dream or something like, you know, something really highly individual to direct this person's path, you know, the old divine, you know, encounter through a, a guardian angel. I mean, I believe that stuff happens. But if I had a guardian angel experience, my reaction is not going to be, hey, let me show you this experience and explain to you why you ought to obey it and why every Christian ought to obey it. And I'm going to start a ministry around it and make lots of money. And, you know. okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. In other words, there's, there's a difference between individual revelation, individual guidance, you know, God intervening in someone's life in, in a, sort of an overt or, or a way that only they're going to know, and making that message highly personal, that direction highly personal, as opposed to binding revelation on the entire believing community from this point on. That's, there's a big difference there. And I, I, see, I see plenty of room for the former, but I don't, I don't really see any scriptural argument for the latter. And you, know, you look at the, the, the council terminology, uh, apply to believers, it, it's, it's overtly eschatological and it's repeatedly eschatological. And that might mean personal eschatology and when you die, okay, and there are other, pe other people still living here doing their, you know, their thing. Okay, well, you know, maybe God has some plan, you know, for me, like if, you know, when I die, I get to do something here on earth that I have no idea what it would be, you know, maybe to come back and pester you. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. You know, can, can God do that? Well, sure, God could do that. But what God isn't going to do is he's not going to send Mike back with some binding word of revelation that the entire believing community is supposed to obey and follow. By the way, if that ever happens after I'm dead, you, you, you see me deny it right here. <laughs> so, so disregard that message when it comes. And this is even recorded. <laughs> so I, I'm, I am highly 